welcome back. And we right now have to cover another vulnerability for Windows. This vulnerability is called Blue Keep. And it came out in 2019. This is a remote desktop protocol or RDP vulnerability. And what is so special about it? Well, as it says right here on this page, this latest RDP vulnerability could allow hackers to remotely run code at the system level without even having to authenticate. In other words, any unpatched Windows system from XP to Windows 7, so these are our targets, with an exposed RDP port is a potential target. So this is a serious vulnerability. Matter of fact, many people link it to be as high vulnerability as the Eternal Blue Bus, which we already covered and which came out in 2017. We can read more about it right here, but as usual, our most important thing is to see how we can exploit it. You can go to this page if you want to find out more about the Blue Keep vulnerability. It even gives some code examples as to what the vulnerability was and how it got patched. Down here, we can see what systems are affected. We got Windows 7, Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2008 R2, Windows Server 2003, Windows Vista, and Windows XP. Exploit potential, it is a remote code execution, as the Eternal Blue was, and number of potential victims are around 1 million. Now, for this attack to work, there is one thing that needs to be enabled on the target system, and that thing is port 3389. Now, this port 3389 is used for remote desktop protocol, and it is often used inside of big and large companies. You will most likely never see it on home devices, unless it is purposely enabled. But in order for us to be able to exploit it, we must enable it on our Windows 7 machine. So what I'm going to do is go to my Windows 7 machine and open the Cal Linux as well. In order to see whether it is enabled, we can use our regular good old nmap, so we can type sudo nmap-ss 192.168.1 and let me check the IP address ipconfig.8 perform the scan on your Windows 7 machine and in just a few seconds we should get results of which ports are open and right here we do not see port 33A9 being open this means this target is not vulnerable because that port is closed in order to make it vulnerable all we need to do is open the remote desktop protocol so go to the control panel system and security then under the system, on the side you will see this remote settings, click on it, and down here check allow connections from computers running any version of remote desktop. By default it should be don't allow connections to this computer. And as I already mentioned, many large companies have this enabled. We just click on apply, click on ok, we can close this, and if we run the scan once again, right now we will have 3389 port open. Let us see whether it is vulnerable or has it been patched. If I open MSF console, and the exploitation is similar as it was with the Eternal Blue. We got the auxiliary module that will tell us whether the target is vulnerable without exploiting it, and then we have an exploit that will gain access to the target and give us the meterpreter shell. So what we can do is we can just type the vulnerability name, so search blue keep, press enter, and we will see two results right here. As I mentioned, the auxiliary module and the exploit. So let's go with the auxiliary module first. We copy its name, we use, and then paste the name of the auxiliary module, clear the screen, show information. This module checks a range of hosts for the blue keep vulnerability by binding this channel outside of its normal slot and sending non-DOS packets which respond differently on patched and vulnerable hosts. So this is the way that it will figure out whether the target is vulnerable or not. Let's see what options we need to set. So show options. And there seems to be a few of them. We got the R port which is 3389. This is something that we will not change. We got the R hosts. So let's set it to the IP address of the Windows 7 machine. We got these four options right here as well, but the only one that is required is this 
RDP client IP. And it says right here the client IPv4 address to report during connect. And this pretty much doesn't matter. It can be any IP address. For example, I will just leave it to be this one, even though this is an IP address that I do not have on my local network. But I will just leave it on this. And if I go right here and type run, it will tell me the target is vulnerable. The target attempted cleanup of the incorrectly bound MS T120 channel. This means it is vulnerable. Let's use the exploit to gain access. So use exploit Windows RDP. And then let's check our possible options. We want to go with the CVE 2019 Blue Keep remote code execution. If I show info, down here it will tell you how exactly it exploits the target. And if I show our available options, so we got pretty much the same options as with the auxiliary module. We got the RDP client IP, which is this one, and we are not going to change it once again. These options are not required, so we're not going to specify them anyway. The R hosts we want to set to the IP address of Windows 7 machine. The R port is set correctly. The payload is set to Windows X64 Meterpreter Reverse TCP. And this is also something that we do not want to change. Is this the only payload that will work? Well, most likely since if I go to show targets, you will see that this exploit targets only 64-bit machines. So it will not be able to run on a 32-bit machine. So by this, it seems the 32-bit Windows 7 machines and Windows Servers 2008 are not vulnerable which we really don't care because 99% of machines are 64-bit. And these targets right here is something that we must choose from. Now, this is for default and normal Windows machines. And right here we have targets for the virtual machines. And this is something that we must set. If we leave it on automatic, it should figure out on its own that we are running Windows 7 inside of a virtual box and it will perform the exploit for the virtual box Windows 7 version. But if we, for example, set this one, the exploit should not work. So we must set the target to 2 in case we are running the Windows 7 inside of a virtual box. If we were attacking a regular Windows machine that is vulnerable, we would set 1. If we were attacking a virtual machine from the VMware station, we would set one of these three, and we would set these two accordingly as well. So let's triple check our options. Everything here is set. The payload is a 64-bit payload, which is good. And the target is Windows 7 inside of a virtual box. Great. Let us run the exploit. It tells us that the target is vulnerable. And in just a few seconds, we should get the interpreter shell opened on that Windows 7 machine. And after 30 to 40 seconds, here it is we got Meterpreter Session 1 opened on the target machine. If I type get user ID, it will tell me that we are system. Once again, the highest privilege account on that target machine. We can perform the commands as usual. Enter the shell, type hostname, we are test2 PC, IP config gives us the IP address of the target machine and all of these things that we are already familiar with. Great, another Windows 7 vulnerability covered. So, what is the important thing that we learned from this video? The vulnerability is called BlueKeep. It is a critical RDP or remote desktop protocol vulnerability. And in order to exploit the target, it must be an unpatched 64-bit Windows XP to Windows 7 machine, including Windows Server 2008. And it must have RDP enabled and port 3389 open. Where are these machines most likely to be found? In large companies. So once again, most likely we will not see these types of targets in home networks. Okay, great. Now that we covered Windows 7 vulnerabilities, time to go on to exploit Windows 10 machine. See you in the next video.